This video is going to be a lesson in financial literacy. Once again, thank everyone that has bought any training and thank the wonderful nerd tribe for your well-constructed comments. You're deeply appreciated. All right, I was on the interwebs this morning and I saw this mess about Kanye West and Chase Bank closing his bank accounts. And if they could do that to Kanye West, what can they do to you? You're the little guy. You can't fight them. All right, let me go ahead. This is the lesson in financial literacy. As someone who recently had a bank account closed, I had my Wells Fargo Mac Daddy's Auto business checking account and my disruptive asset bit secured business credit card and my mac daddy's auto secured business credit card all shut down and at the time wells fargo was holding fifty thousand dollars of my money i would became irritated because here's the thing let me go ahead and explain the process to you of a bank closing your account. Number one, it is a federal law that they have to notify you before they close your accounts. It is law. So this special treatment like, well, Kanye, they gave him time to get his stuff. To no, no, no. If you were to, but Wells Fargo did the same thing to me. Wells Fargo sent me a letter saying your accounts are going to be closed. Well, this is what they did. I was out on a um, Friday night and I tried to use my Wells Fargo secured credit card and it was declined. And then I tried to use my other one and it was declined. And this is something that had happened before. So I just pulled out another credit card bill, credit card and paid the bill. And then the next day, I, I write a letter to the CEO of Wells Fargo because here's the thing. I had spent six figures on that credit card, which had the $25,000 limit, and never carried the balance and paid the balance in full. So I didn't abuse the account. I never bounced a check. I never had an overtrap. So I did not do anything to cause the bank to close my account. Nothing. And I was irritated because I got a letter saying my accounts was, uh, cause this was June and they were gonna close my checking accounts in August. So they gave me almost 60 days to get my affairs in order but they instantly shut down the secured credit cards and I became irritated because I was calling and I was like, where is my $50,000? And I actually filed a complaint with the Consumer Protection Bureau and literally three days after I filed that complaint with the Consumer Protection Bureau, I had my $50,000 back. So in the Kanye West could happen again, to anyone. And this is the first your scene? time I've ever had any checking accounts closed. And honestly, I didn't like the way that I was treated by Wells Fargo. And I have no intentions of ever doing business with them again. But because I am financially literate, I knew, because here's the thing, when you go in and you fill out all the paperwork or you check the disclosures online, they'll open up the checking account. There is language when you open up the checking account that they can close your account for any reason in the future if they desire to and you can't sue them. There's nothing you can do because this is how they get you. When you sign up, part of the sign up process is for you to actually state that 
you accept these terms and agreements to open up the checking account. So Kanye West didn't get any special treatment. And once again, I bank with Chase. Currently, I don't have $140 million in Chase, but I got a lot of money in Chase. And am I worried? Nope, not worried. Um, one of the things that you guys do not seem to understand, you're watching YouTube, right? Let's, let's talk about all of the people who are putting up the CPN content. You think that the banks are not watching YouTube when you drop this age corporation sauce, this CPN sauce, this way to commit bank fraud? This, they're watching. They're watching. And I guarantee you, one of the reasons Kanye West got his account shut down is because he pissed someone off who was high up in Chase and it's like, we don't wanna do business with this guy. Well, let's close this account. Guarantee it. I, I'm not even worried about my Chase accounts being closed. If my Chase accounts were closed, guess what? I have a Chase account. I have a Truist account. I have a Naval, a Mercury account. And I've got like five Mercury accounts. So when you're in business, you, you don't just have one bank account because I have um, business credit with Truist. I have American Express. I could literally open up an American Express business account today if I so desire. But I'm gonna tell you why I'm not. Uh, Chase has a 524 rule, which is if you open up five new credit accounts in the, in the previous 24 months before you apply to Chase, you cannot get any of their personal credit products or any of their business credit products. And last year I went on a tear. I literally, I have seven American Express credit cards. I have three personal and I have four business. So the business, that's not gonna show up on my credit report, but I am not gonna go under 524 until December of next year. So I'm not applying for anything else, but once I do, because I have the tax returns, I have the bank statements, I am going to get a business credit card from Chase. I'm gonna get a line of credit from Chase. I have a line of credit with Truist. I have a line of credit with Marcus uh, by Goldman Sachs. And I'm gonna open up another line of credit in December of 2023 with Chase which is why I'm gonna keep my primary banking with Chase. I have the credit score, I have the numbers, I have all the data points except I can't get around. Like I, I literally opened up my trading account, my trading bank account with Chase and I asked the guy who was open and I said, hey, does 524 include business products? And he said, yes, it does. If you're above 524 you cannot get any business products now that chase business credit card now they chase line of credit so why am i bringing this to you uh people are all upset like what the chances of you getting your bank account closed are slim does it happen yeah it happened to me i like i said uh, with wells fargo um, one of the things that happened was Wells Fargo got rid of that secured credit card because one of the things, one of the theories that I have is, you know, Wells Fargo was going to have to give me $50,000 in unsecured credit and they were getting rid of the product. And I'm going to tell you why they're getting rid of the products and why if you have bad credit, it is so hard to find a good secured credit card that will convert or graduate to an unsecured credit card. Typically, people who get secured credit cards don't use them. So as a financial product, banks typically don't make money with secured credit cards. They just don't make money. So if it don't make money, it don't make sense. So this is why it's so hard and currently, U.S. Bank, in my opinion, 
has the best secured credit card product on the market. Um, maybe Navy Federal is better, but I know for a fact that if you get a secured credit card with US Bank and you clean up your credit, because here's the thing, you go ahead and you can get a US Bank secured credit card and you can fund the secured account up to $5,000, which is what I recommend that you do. And once your credit, because here's the thing, your credit's gonna have to be clean before they unsecure the card. Um, no one tells you this, I just know this from data points. And um, once you get your credit report clean and you're looking at, in the current environment, about two years, maybe three years, clean up your credit report. So what you wanna do, is get a US bank secured credit card at the begin of your beginning of your rebuild because and then fund it up to 5000 and once your credit is clean then go ahead and call US bank and they're going to do a hard pull to check your credit to see if it's eligible to be unsecured but US bank I think Navy Federal and there are some credit unions, but here's the problem. Here's the problem, financial literacy. If you do not have 5,000, 10,000, 20,000, 30,000 dollar credit cards on your credit report, when you go apply for other institutions, they're going to give you similar limits to what you already have. So this is why it's very, very important for you to fund your US bank credit card to 5,000, I were, was working with some people because if you didn't know, I was gonna do some credit repair and I, I, like, I don't like it, so I'm not gonna do that business. But uh, one of the people that I was working with got a US bank credit card, funded it to 5,000. He uh, was able to graduate and he actually asked them for a credit limit increase and they took him from 5,000 to 10,000. So now when he goes to Chase, Citibank, Discover, and he applies for a credit card, he's gonna get at least a nine to $15,000 credit card because he has a $10,000 unsecured credit card as a primary trade line reporting on his credit report. So, you know, this is just some understanding because I've been seeing all kinds of stuff like they're going to close our accounts and they're waking them. Like I saw some I knew was false. Like they closed my account and they transferred the money from my daughter's account to my account. That they can't do that. That's illegal. If they're going to close your account, what they have to do by law is notify you before they close it. And if they close it for some reason really quickly, there must be a check with what you had in that credit account. Cause I, I was like, that didn't happen. That didn't happen. Cause you know, understand we're going through the global reset, understand that there's a lot of fear out there. There's a lot of uncertainty. Um, we're about to, we're in a recession right now. Make no, make no mistake about it. We're in a recession right now. And this recession is going to get worse in 2023. So you, you got a lot of people out here scared, but once again, uh, the likelihood that you are going to get your checking account shut down is pretty damn slim. It's pretty damn slim. And I see this, take your money out the bank. Okay. You take your money out the bank, where are you gonna put it? You're gonna take your money, bring it home and put it in your mattress? Or dig a hole in your yard and put it and bury it in the yard? What are you gonna do with your money? What are you gonna do with your money? I mean, like I said, I have a really good relationship with Chase. And last year, October this time, I made this R. Kelly video my name was all across the internet. People were making YouTube videos. People were making TikTok videos. Maybe Chase saw that. I'm Once again, uh, maybe Chase didn't see it. I don't know. I don't really care because I'm not worried that Chase is gonna close my account. If they did, I could just move my money over to Truist. And if Truist closed my account, I could move my money over to Mercury. 
And if Mercury closed my account, I can move my money over to American Express. If American Express closed my account, I can move my money over to Schwab. Yes, yeah, Schwab has banking accounts and credit cards. Um, so once again, as an entrepreneur, you don't wanna have one bank account. You wanna deal with two to three banks anyway. You wanna have a business credit card. You wanna have a line of credit from two to three banks in case something gets funky with a bank over here and you can, and cause you're already set up. Cause like I'm already set up. I already have my holding company checking account at Truist. I have a line of credit with Truist and I have a business uh, credit card with Truist. So if something happened with Chase, I'm just, and I won't miss a beat. I could just transfer, I, I, like literally, it would take me three minutes to just read the suit because I'm already set up. So if you're a business owner, you want to have multiple checking accounts. And like Kanye, once again, Kanye is extremely talented. Can't take that away from the dude. And as a business person, and maybe, I don't know his business, but I know as a small entrepreneur, I'm not a billionaire. I don't have a, a multi-billion dollar company. I don't know. But I do know on my level at the million dollar company, the multiple million dollar company, that I have multiple business relation, banking relationships. And uh, I'm sitting around here next year, I'm probably gonna open up uh, a business checking account with American Express. Once I, cause like, like I said, I got plans for the future. I already know what I'm doing. I, I got a question. How many of you know what credit cards you're gonna apply for before you apply, lines of credit, and I already know December 23rd, I, I might wait until January, but I am going to be in a Chase branch with my tax firm, with my, cause you're gonna need your tax, you're gonna need one year's tax return to get a $250,000 line of credit with Chase. You're gonna need a P&L statement. You're gonna need a net worth statement. You're gonna need your taxes. I already know, cause I asked, I asked the banker. So I already will be lined up. I'll walk in there with everything that I know. Shout out to the credit plug. He talks about this all of the time. And I'm gonna go ahead and get that $250,000 line of credit. And I'm gonna get a, a, a business credit card. And this whole year, let me tell you what I'm gonna do. Uh, recently, I have uh, essentially two business charge cards with American Express. I have the American Express Platinum, I have the American Express Gold, and I have two American Express credit cards. I have the Delta Sky Miles Reserve, and I have the Delta Sky Miles Platinum. Now, uh, they gave me some significant limits on the reserve, and uh, my pay over time limit on the platinum is 30,000. So between the, the platinum and the reserve, I have 100K in true business credit. Now the platinum, they only gave me 10,000. So what am I gonna do? I'm gonna wait 90 days and then I'm gonna ask for a credit limit increase on that platinum. And then every 90 days with American Express, cause there's all the information you could, you can wait 61, no, no, you, you gotta wait 90 days, 91 days. So every 90 days, I'm going to ask for a credit limit increase on that because I'm pretty happy with the Delta Sky Miles personal credit card. Because once again, I am not using my personal credit cards. And here's the thing, I am not worried about American Express shutting down the cards that I don't use because one of the things is I'm gonna use that gold card quite a bit. I'm getting ready to start doing some advertising in the American Express gold card. You get four reward points for using it for online advertising. So literally I spent $150,000, I can get 600,000 points. And also this is where it gets better. 
because right now I'm kind of cooling off. But once I use that, because it probably take me three to four months to spend one hundred and fifty thousand dollars on online advertising. And then because I have a holding company strategy, I can go to American Express and get another gold card for Savage Consulting Services because that has a bank account that has multiple deposits. So here's the thing. When you apply for American Express business product, you have to give them access to your business checking account. OK, so I will do that sometime next year and get another gold card for Savage uh, Consulting Services and then spend a hundred because literally next year I spend three hundred thousand dollars on online advertising. I can get one point two million American Express points. So because I'm going to have that heavy spend on the business side, I'm not even worried about them shutting down my personal cards because they're going to be making plenty of money off of me on the business side. And I, once again, uh, only thing in my wallet right now are my business credit cards. I don't have one personal credit. I actually, I got my American Express Reserve and I got my American Express Platinum. I just have them in there. You know, if I'm out and I'm doing something and I need to do some, but once again, uh, if I have to travel, I'm going to buy it with my American Express Platinum because I get 5x points. So a $2,000 ticket is $10,000. It's 10,000 reward points. So once again, you know, you got to be financially literate and you got to stop. Um, you got to ask yourself and I'm going to say something and it's going to be extremely dismissive. The average American don't have no fucking money in the bank. So what's going to happen if they shut you down you're just going to have to find another bank to get your direct deposit in where your checking account is like a lunch pad money comes in bam money's back out because you don't have no money so there's a lot of like i said understand times are getting hard i uh, literally i've had two ex-girlfriends reach out to me times are getting hard i understand but once again when you become financially literate and understand, and this is something, instead of knowing how many children Kim Kardashian has, you should know the, your rights as a banking customer and what a bank can do to you. And literally every bank, unless you get into wealth banking, private banking, it's a totally different game. Uh, you, you sign contracts, you do different things, but essentially, I'm not worried about Chase shutting down my uh, bank account. I have no options. I have, like I said, I'm not leaving Chase because once again, Chase is a tool. I already know what I can get out of Chase next year. And do you know what you can get out of your bank or out of your credit union? Do you even know? But no, no, no. You're sitting there watching videos about you know, high value men, but you don't even know what's going on with your own checking account. You don't even know what's going on in your financial life, which is stupid. So understand banks can close. Like I said, it happened to me. And actually I made a video talking about why I cannot recommend Wells Fargo secure credit card. Then they shut it down. And also data point, if you apply for Wells Fargo, the black card, they're going to ask for tax returns to issue you that business credit product. So this whole notion of take your money out the bank and just be scared. And I understand that, you know, um, life is getting rough. It's getting treacherous. We've got things coming out there, but understand any bank that you open up an account with, once you sign up, it is included in the sign up paperwork that they can close your account at any time for any reason if they want to. And there's nothing you can do about it. You can't sue them because if Kanye was to go out and fight them, which would just be stupid because um, if I was Kanye's financial advisor, he would have a holding company. He has subsidiaries. And at a minimum, at his level, he would have five banking relationships. 
He would have business credit. He would have business credit cards with five different banks. Five minimum. If I was his financial advisor and I was setting up his company structure. And this would have been just like, oh, they closed your account. Okay, we're just gonna move the money over here. Boom. <laughs> Keep it moving. Have strength for lunch. Wouldn't even be a thing. Wouldn't even be worried about it because there would be four other banking relationships with business credit, lines of credit, business credit cards. I, he'd be set up so tight. He'd be set up so tight. But once again, this is Kanye. And I, I will say, and once again, I don't know his personal business, but I'm going to say this. I would not be surprised if that is the only bank account that Kanye has. I wouldn't be surprised at all. Wouldn't be surprised at all. Um, but once again, Kanye may be smarter, you know, cause like this is not information that people put out nor should you be even putting this information out because scamming, uh, he could easily be a victim of scamming and bank fraud because he has money in the bank. This is one of the reasons that I do not, like I stopped doing a lot of stuff. Like, you know, I used to show bank accounts. I used to show, I don't even do that anymore because you never know because essentially when you go online and you log in, it shows you the last four numbers uh, based upon what I understand about scamming, that's all scammers need. They just need those last four numbers. They need your name. They just need a few pieces of information to empty out your bank account. So that's one of the reasons that, you know, I am not as receipt driven as I used to be. Um, because I realized that I was making myself a target because, you know, scamming scam scams scams are prevalent and i'm a high net worth individual and i'm just gonna open myself up to all kinds of this is like once again as a business owner you should not be using your debit card attached to your business checking account that is stupid and this is something else too i was um having a conversation with the banker who was opening up my checking account for my trading company and he, he was like, you know, and we, we had a really interesting conversation. I says, you know, I never ever use my business debit card because I explained to him my protective measure. Essentially, the accounts that I have the most money in, there's no debit card, there's no checks. So there's no way unless someone broke into my house and logged into my computer, could someone even have that information. Because every time you use your business debit card, you are exposing the money in your business checking account to risk because there's all types of scams. Like you, you put your debit card to get gas and let's say they got a skimmer on there. They want to hit because the, they, they got all your information. They got all the information they need to empty out your checking account. So if you're a business owner, you should not ever be using a debit card that's attached to your bank account with a lot of money in it. That's just stupid. And we had that conversation and the banker was like, well, he said, you know, because he says, I am surprised at the number of business owners who have business checking accounts and they're using their debit card. Like I would never ever use my business debit card in a restaurant, just give the server my debit card. She goes somewhere, risk, it's just risk, it's just risk. And once again, I, since I'm a financially astute person, I only use credit cards. If someone like, this happened with my Capital One account, someone actually hacked into my Walmart account, which had my Capital One credit card attached to it, bought a TV, an iPhone, some iPods. I went ahead and alerted Capital One. Bam, they cut that card off and they gave me money back, issued me a new card. Bam. Whereas if that was happening with a debit card and you know, once again, it's just stupid. It's just stupid to have, and like, I don't even, honestly, I don't even have a debit card in my wallet at the moment. 
my debit card is in it's in my my bank my credit card bank I don't even carry it so if I know that I need cash I will pull my debit card out that binder and go to the bank and withdraw the cash and then I will come home and I put the, de the, the debit card back in the binder I don't even carry my debit card don't even carry it so there's no way that I can lose it because I don't carry it and everything out like this is my setup no ammo well it on me but I'm carrying the American Express setup I have my American Express business platinum my American Express gold my American Express Delta Sky Miles and my American Express platinum and my truest Visa business card because in case I'm somewhere where I can't use American Express, bam, I pull out the, v, the business visa, use that. So that's my current credit card setup that I have. And once I start, and the only reason I have the gold in my wallet is you get 4X points on dining and food and takeout. And once I start using that a lot, that's gonna come out of my wallet. Once I use spend $150,000 on online advertising, that card will come out of my wallet, it will go into the bank, and at that time, I should have the Savage Consulting Service Delta Gold Card, which then I will replace that as the payment method on my online advertising. And then, here's something else. This is a special power that your business platinum credit card has. If you have a, an expense over 5,000, this goes for the Delta um, Platinum as well. If you spend $5,000 or more, you get 1.5 to points. So what I'll do after I exhaust it, cause you know, essentially I have business accounts that I know that I have money going in. And I already know to apply for a business credit product from American Express, they gotta see a business bank account with minimum three months transaction history. So uh, I might, I don't know, I don't know, because I might be able to get a third gold card because currently I have seven and when I get this additional gold card, that's going to give me eight. And I think the max amount of American Express credit cards you can have is 14. So if I can get a third gold card for another company, then I will actually start using that. And literally, I can get almost 2 million reward points for spending $450,000 on American Express cards. And once again, with that kind of spend, I am not worried about being shut down on the cards I'm not using because I have an active profile and they will actually see me using these cards consistently every month, spending a lot of money. I mean, $150,000 spend is a lot of spend for any credit card. It's a ton, it's a ton of spend. And, um, True story, I called up American Express and I was going to use my American Express Business Platinum to pay for my new Porsche, but the dealership won't take the credit card. But there's a way, and I'll even explain it to you. Um, my current spend limit on the Business American Express Platinum is 100K. But after I traded my car, I was gonna to be to 130. Guess what? American Express has a workaround. You can pre-fund your American Express business platinum. You can do a prepayment or you can do a wire and put that money into the account and use it for whatever. So I just gave you some sauce. I just gave you some game because if you're a business owner and you have um, a good cash flow in business and you have poor credit and you can get into the American Express ecosystem you can literally pre-fund your American Express Platinum, Gold, any of the charge cards, you could pre-fund them and spend, and this is what, what's, what's gonna happen is, if you, let's say you were a business owner, and let's say you owned a e-commerce company, 
and your credit was kind of crappy, but you managed to get the American Express gold card and you had to pay a vendor. Uh, normally you would pay this vendor ACH, but you had to pay a vendor $50,000. And what you could do is call up American Express, wire that $50,000 to American Express and pay the vendor with that card. And what this is going to do is dramatically accelerate your American Express profile. I would not be shocked if you did that literally three times that your spend limit on that gold card would literally go up to 100K. Serious, serious, real talk, real talk. And this, this is one of the things I'm doing. Uh, if you've noticed, my content has changed. Uh, one of the things that I have done is I've like hit the little dots and everyone that was pissing me off with all of this lying content, I'm just stop consuming them and I'm gonna work down to be helpful, accurate, real data points, like the credit plug, like the real estate trapper. These are two guys I rock with because they tell you the truth. They're not out here making up stuff like saying that, oh, you can get an age corporation with bad credit and you can get $500,000 in credit in three weeks. It ain't happening. It's just not happening. But literally, there's only a, and Will Roundtree, he's another one that puts out good information. Will Roundtree, uh, the credit plug, and the real estate trapper. These are guys I rock with because they tell you the truth. And we in the black community don't need any more hype. We don't need any more scams. We don't need any more bad information. And I refuse to contribute to that because I just gave you some serious financial literacy because here's the thing. If you know what's going on more with your professional sports team or your college team or the Kardashians and you have no clue that what's happening in your first life, in your, your financial life, like um, Real Estate Trapper put this out that more people knew how many kids Kim Kardashian had, but only 30% of Americans knew how to fill out a mortgage application. That's stupid. That's just stupid. But once again, um, you know, if you're going to, and this is one of the things like, uh, I'll, I'll share something else with you. I had the Divi charge card, which the rewards suck. And here's another thing. The Divi charge card, it's a charge card. It operates, the way mine was underwritten was operating because I had a, a lot of money in a checking account. And I moved that money out of that checking account because that checking account has checks and has a debit card. So that was risky. And then they just, my credit limit went from 150,000 to 40 to it's my credit limit with the Divi charge card is $95 per month. It's $95 right now. So with a lot of these FinTechs, Capital on TAC, um, they're charge cards. Capital on TAC has an option. You can do a charge card or you can have a monthly minimum of 10% of your balance. But it's, but you know, to get that is kind of hard. So if you're gonna have a charge card, go with the granddaddy of charge cards, American Express, because anything for business, I'm just gonna go ahead and pay, but my personal trips will be funded by points. Last time that I was buying online advertising, I traveled first class for one, two, three years. I went to Miami, I went to California, I went to London, I went to Puerto Rico, I, I went to the Bahamas, all first class trips on points. So if you're a business owner and you got a lot of spend and you're not taking advantage of the points game, you're doing yourself a disservice. All right, so uh, once again, I'm getting ready and I, I'm gonna work on it today. I'm gonna work on it today. But if you buy the program, I've got some new training that's coming up that's gonna, because I can go ahead and tell you the part of the new training since I'm gonna start running ads, and this is part of the intellectual property school, is how to run profitable YouTube ads. There were people who would tell you just run ads. That's stupid. First of all, you've got to create a lab. You gotta run test ads, spend a little bit of money, because here's the thing. If your ads are not converting on say, theoretically $3,000 a month spend, they're not gonna convert at 100K. They're not. 
So what you want to do is start putting your ads out, get them converting, and then increase your spend. And this is going to take some experimentation, and I'm going to walk you through the process because there are people who just run ads. Um, running ads is not as simple as people make, once again, YouTube University. Uh, people be lying on YouTube University every day. But if you want this new training, go ahead, get in the program and you will get this new training and I should work on that today. All right, first of all, thank you to anyone that has bought any training from bschoolforhustlers.com. Thank you very much for supporting the business. I really appreciate you. Also, thank you to the Nerd Tribe for your well-constructed comments. All right, this is something that's been percolating and I want to go ahead and go ahead and tell me, have I ever mentioned the art of holding business mentoring program on the YouTube channel? The answer would be no. It was $30,000 and I recently raised the price to $50,000. Now let's talk about why I never mentioned this program on the channel. This is the Institute of Economic Thought talking about things that are going on in the economy. 99% of the people who watch this channel are not qualified for the mentoring program because you're gonna need to have an up and running business making six figures a month for this to even remotely make sense for you. And I've had many people, including Income Cam, who came to my channel after I made my CPN video and went to the website and he's like, you got this program, $30,000, man, I got stuff for the people. All right, let me go ahead and say something. You having bad credit has nothing to do with you being black. You having bad credit is you mismanage your credit. So Income Cam, that's a bunch of bullshit for the people, for the people. And I'm gonna say something. Um, I'm a capitalist. I believe in a capitalistic society. I operate, I work in a capitalistic society. And if you don't have the money for this product, big whoop. I'm not gonna cry a river. I, this is something else too. And this is something I learned years and years ago. When I gave away, and let's just go ahead and get to that. When I gave away 19 free business courses from this website, 95% of the people did not take advantage. So I learned that lesson that you could have things that are um, appropriately priced where everyone can buy. Uh, here's the thing, man. If the person who has a problem doesn't care enough to spend money to solve the problem, it ain't that big of a problem for them. So I learned that lesson, you know, for the people, for the people. I literally tried to spend six months giving people a business curriculum that if they had opened up the courses and put in the work, they would make money. And 95% of the people did not take advantage of that offer. And it, it was a very important lesson for me because at the time I was consuming a lot of Gary Vee content. Just give, just give, and just give, and just give. And I gave. And it didn't work out because here's the thing. Let's go back to the art of holding business mentoring program. What does this include? This includes something that I cannot scale, my time. I only have 24 hours in the day. And I'll be honest, you want to know why my consulting packages are so expensive? I really don't want to talk to aspirational new business owners who want to discuss and talk about what they're going to do when they don't have a business up and running. I, I simply, it's just, I've been doing this 14 years. I don't want to talk to those people. It's not like I hate you, but it's a boring conversation. It's like, hey, you know, I got this ideal. I want, and I, once again, my time is not something I can scale. I only got 24 hours in the day and I do not want to be doing a bunch of talking to people on the phones. Like if my consulting was 500 bucks, that's what would happen. I would literally be spending a lot of time talking to people who have not broken past the mental barrier of actually getting started. So this is why I have never mentioned this program on the YouTube channel. This is why it's not even in the description box because I know the vast majority of people watching the channel, it's not a good fit. So it's pointless, but here's what I'm getting ready to do. B school for hustlers, business channel. This is what I got going on over here. You know, I, I get a lot of people like, there's only doom and gloom over here, man. It's just doom and gloom. I'm like, I have other channels. If you literally want to start a business, make some money, direct yourself to B School for Hustlers. This is where I drop the business content. And I want to tell you why. There's a different audience over here. I can literally, I've got 80,000 less subscribers over here, right? And I can put a video up here and I'll get three, you know, 15, you know, 1,200 to 3,000 views. And on the main channel, I'll get 3,000. So I have 80,000 less subscribers over here. And proportionally, I get more views from a smaller subscriber base because the folks who are over here actually want to start a business. They're interested in starting business. They're interested in doing the hard work. So this is some stuff that I will start talking about over here. And this is some stuff I will start talking about over here. Same thing. Way less subscribers, but proportionally, I get more views from serious people. Once again, you know, I appreciate the folks at the Institute of Economic Thought. I appreciate the well-constructed comments. But from a business standpoint, and this is something that I am getting ready to really, really work on. Like the videos over here are different and it is not the business content so if you want uh if you want business content how to start a business how to deal with credit how to build real business credit the fastest path to wealth if you want this type of stuff go ahead go over to the corporate game get to the corporate game or be like this is that b school for hustlers is people starting businesses this is where the how to start a business content is this is if you already have a business this is the business game for if you already have a business now i will probably start advertising the mentoring program over there i would never ever advertise the mentoring program over here because 99 percent of you guys is not a good fit it just doesn't make sense and i am sick and tired of people skipping over the stuff that they can't afford 
with the coupon this is like 2500 this is 2300 y'all like oh, i don't want that i want the best of you glendon cameron i want the best of you i want your best training even though i'm not qualified because here's something that i have learned years and years ago when i was doing let's see where is it when i was doing 30 days to 2500 i was doing that i had someone who already had a business who went from five and six thousand dollars a month to thirty thousand dollars a month and i had a bunch of people who were new who wanted to start a business but they actually haven't started the business and that should just illustrate to you the point that if you're still in that i want to be starting something phase um once again I, I have love for you i hope you do well i hope you reach your dreams wishes goals ambitions i hope you do but i don't really want to be part of it because it is annoying it's frustrating because for someone and this is one of the things that happened the reason i have this because this, this comes from years and years ago i had a friend and i was just saying hey if they don't know that i offer this how can they buy it so every now and then i will get someone a business owner someone's like hey you know i see you have all this stuff for beginning people but you don't have nothing for me and it's true because the business owner someone that's been in business three four five six years um they have different needs they have different requirements they have a different situation and they're going to need some stuff to look at their marketing their advertising um like i'll tell you one person who got into the program because this is what happens it's like hey been watching your channel enjoy your content and we would just kind of do a custom bill for a business owner and i had someone who had a business they were doing five million a year running the business the uh, business owner was kind of running ragged and then i kind of stepped in and just did a few tweaks and we went from five million a year to a million a month just a few little tweaks because here's the thing the business owner had done a lot of stuff correct they had built a business they had cash flow and the same information that you start a business and get to five million is not the same information that's going to get a business to 10 million it's, it's a different set of skill sets it's a different set of management tactics it's a different way of looking at your business and this business owner went as far as she could go until i stepped in and that's what this is for it's not for the rank and file because like once again this, this is one of the reasons that my consulting package is so expensive i don't want to talk to you if you're just playing around with the concept of starting a business i don't really want to talk to you i've been doing this like i said 14 years i want to talk to people i, I had a great consult with someone who owned a pharmaceutical company I had a great consult with someone who owned they actually were buying and selling gold this was interesting it was exciting these were really dynamic conversations now for the people who want to start a business this is what i do group coaching and a lot of you want one-on-one -on -one, but once again my most precious resource is time so i can you know do a bunch of group coaching i can you know 50 100 people at the same time that's something i can scale and that's why i do it like this you will not talk to me get on the phone with me for less than 2500 bucks it ain't happening because that is a qualifier if you look at the 2500 and like you, you have a company you have revenue of 30 to fifty thousand dollars and you've been in business you spent money on marketing 2500 dollars is not that big of a deal for you but if you don't have a business you just have a job you're making five thousand you're like 2500 that's a, that, once again you're not qualified and no, once again i don't ever talk smack or crap about people not buying my products what if you ever like oh you know you broke you can't buy my never but see here's the thing i believe in the abundance mindset today there is someone going out and they're going to drop three million dollars on the bugatti see i understand that there's so much money in the world there's a ton of money in the world. There's a lot of money in the world. And I get my share of money in the world. So I don't trip. I don't insult people. I don't demean people for not buying my products. You can't afford it. You can't afford it. But please stop contacting me and leaving these comments in the comment section about this program that you can't afford. You want to know why you can't afford it? Number one, you've not spent three to five years building your business and getting your revenue up to six figures per month. That's why you can't afford it because it's not for you. Um, like once again, I honestly, I actually thought about, you know, giving these courses away again, but all I'm going to do is get a bunch of lazy, do nothing people who are like, oh, it's free. I'm going to sign up for it. and going to do shit with it. Once again, my serious people are at the corporate game. My serious people are at B-School for Hustlers. That's where my serious people are. And once again, the serious content, I put up a video by Will Roundtree. The serious content just doesn't get the views because a lot of people just kind of want to play around with business. They're bought into this, what up, hustlers? You can actually make, you know, 10, 15, 20, 30 thousand dollars a month, not work that hard, have plenty of time for your hobbies and your family and vacation while not working that hard. I believe that is complete and utter bullshit. Here's the thing. When you start a business, you're going to work harder, not less, harder for three to five years until you shape it up, you build your management team, you get it going the way you want to go. And then after it's built, after you've put a management team in place, then you can chill out and then you can relax. But in the beginning, you're going to be working more. But so many people bought into this concept that, hey, I can like sprinkle some hustle dust on this. And um, yeah, I can get all this money and I can be hanging out with Big Booty Betty. Um, it's just not happening. So once again, please stop leaving comments in the comment section. Stop emailing me about this program because you can't afford it. And I'm not mad at you. Like once again, I've never advertised this on any channel. And once again, I'm getting ready to um, shape this up for B school for hustlers in the corporate game because I do have some new group coaching that's coming. Because once again, I want to say something. I don't have an inferiority complex. I feel that my time is extremely valuable. I feel that my wisdoms and insights are extremely valuable. And um, yeah, you know, if you want to put something together and you are a business owner, you've already done the hard work. You've already got it started. Maybe you know I've had some people that I had to help them switch up their corporate structure. And you know, it, it's a whole different game dealing with a business owner that has built a business, has cash flow because they've done a lot of things correctly. And it's so much more fun. And like I said, I, I do like <clears throat> the live trainings are coming back. Uh, there's a lot of stuff that is going to happen um probably november and december and you know like i said if you don't have a business i don't like hate you or nothing like that but i don't want to talk to you on the phone for an hour talking about what you want to do that's boring that's straight up boring and that's one of the reasons that i don't even bring up this stuff what you will see in the comment section is the program the intellectual property school that's what you see you see nothing about this nothing because like most people can afford it because they haven't done the work so once again please stop contacting me pestering me asking me questions why should i hire you to do this versus an attorney uh, number one the attorney has never ran a business 
See, that's the thing. My experience is extremely valuable. That proved that with being in the storage auction business, writing a book, making millions of dollars from a book, from a book. So, like I said, you know, I got some new stuff that's coming up, some new stuff to help you guys out. So, once again, please stop going in the comments. Please stop going to B School for Hustles and like, you know, like I said, I raised the price. You want, you want to know why I raised the price to run people off? Because, like I said, um, there will literally be a handful of people in the art of holding business mentoring program per year. Literally a handful, maybe ten, maybe twenty people a year. That's it. But that's cool because it ain't for everybody. It's not for everybody. So. Go ahead, be on the lookout for the new training that's coming. And, you know, if you're serious about business, direct yourself to B-School for Hustlers. This is how to start a business content in the corporate game. You already have a business, so, you know, because I'm getting ready to start talking about some different stuff over here. So this is where the serious content is. And this is where the, uh, the, the, the crazy stuff is. This is where I post the crazy stuff. This is where I get into it. This is where I just have a little fun. So once again, that's the thing. That's the thing, man. So thank you for your time. Thank you for everyone that's bought some training in B-School for Hustlers. We're getting ready to crank it up. Give me some time to define this, to set it up. And I will see you guys in.